Coming up on DTNS, Chris Ashley from SMR Podcast joins us to talk about new features for Pixel phones, AT&T exempting HBO Max from data caps, and Samsung's new subscription service. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, June 2nd, 2020 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm uh, Roger Chang, producer of the show. Yes, that's what you are. He almost forgot. Uh, also joining us, as I just mentioned, uh, Chris Ashley, uh, host of the SMR podcast. Chris, welcome back. Hey, hey, thank you for having me back. Hello, thank everyone. you. Uh, and uh, extra thank you again uh, for being part of yesterday's show. Really appreciate it, man. Oh, my God. Absolute pleasure. Thank you to your fans and to everybody else that caught a listen and had kind words to say. That was uh, unexpected. We had no idea. We actually had to talk about you know, is this going to be good for us to, you know, because what's going to sure. happen? And we're like, you know what? Let's go. Let it, let it fly. And the response has just been overwhelming. So, yeah, awesome. Well, I'm, gl I'm glad you decided uh, to do that, given that it turned out positive. Uh, we've, we've had no negative responses yet uh, uh, to that show. So thank Amazing. you, the listeners, for that as well. Uh, we were just talking about all kinds of things, grilling food and getting haircuts. Uh, get that wider conversation in our expanded show at patreon.com slash DTNS. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Cisco CEO Chuck Robbins announced that Cisco Live, scheduled for Wednesday tomorrow, will be postponed. Robbins said that, quote, people across the U.S. and the world are dealing with so much pain, frustration, and anger. We want to give you space this week to do what you need to do within your own organizations and communities. And likewise, uh, Sony postponing the PlayStation 5 event that was supposed to happen Thursday, June 4th. Uh, the company's official account tweeted, while we understand gamers worldwide are excited to see PS5 games, we do not feel that right now is a time for celebration, and for now we want to stand back and let more important voices be heard. Sony didn't give details on a new date yet. Uh, also, EA delayed the Madden NFL 21 event scheduled for Tuesday, and Google delayed its Android 11 beta announcement. New data from Gartner shows global sales of smartphones declined 20.2% in the first quarter of 2020 this year. Samsung smartphone sales fell 22.7% in Q1. However, the company kept the number one spot with 18.5% of market share. Huawei recorded a decline of 27.3% year over year to 42.5 million units. However, still kept its number two position with 14.2% market share. Apple's iPhone sales declined 8.2% to 41 million units, and Oppo's smartphone sales fell 19.1%. However, strong sales of Xiaomi's Redmi devices actually led the company to a gain in Q1 over 2019, the only top five company to do so. Amazon now lets you use the drop-in feature on all your Amazon-capable devices at once. You could already use the drop-in feature to send your voice to, say, the Echo in the bathroom or the Echo Show in the kitchen. But now you can say, drop in everywhere, and it'll send your voice to all devices, kind of like a whole house intercom. Reminders also can be set up for all devices at once. Unless you're like me and you use Amazon's Assistant on a Sonos device, in which case you can't do any of these things. HP released a new version of Omen 15 gaming laptop with a 15.6-inch screen on a 180-degree hinge. HP hopes people will pick it up for more uses than just gaming. It's for lots of things. You can choose AMD Ryzen 7H series or Intel Core i7H series processors and up to the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 Super Max Q GPU. Specs range up to 32 gigabytes of RAM, 1 terabyte PCIe drive, and an OLED panel up to 300 hertz, Full HD or 120 hertz for Ultra HD. Omen 15 is available on June 2nd, that's today, starting at $999. HP also announced the 16-inch Pavilion Gaming 16 in June, starting at $799. The company also announced its first 2.1-channel speaker system, a wireless gaming headset, new mice, and a 24-inch gaming monitor. Anyone tempted to buy an HP? Uh, I mean, kind of, for those I was prices. Just saying, it looks I good. I need a new computer, and now I'm like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> that Verizon processor <laughs> is a beast. And that NVIDIA, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it, it's, they're, they're nice looking uh -oh. specs. And and they're uh, they're not as, they're, they're toned down a little bit in their look as well. Uh, they, they've, they've been, they've, they've tried to sleek it up and make it a little, 
so you could use your gaming laptop in a business situation and not right. have it look so out of place. All right, let's talk a little more about that Pixel update. Google announced new fixture, fixed features for its Pixel line of Android phones. Adaptive battery does a job of predicting when your battery is going to run out. I'll give you a little bit of warning ahead of time. You can now start recordings with Google Assistant and even get automatic transcripts. Uh, but some of the beefier features are personal safety check, which lets you set a time to check in. Let's say you're out for a walk. Maybe you're in an unfamiliar area or at a time of night that you're just a little unsure about. Uh, or maybe you're just out at the clubs, whatever. At that time, a prompt asks if you're okay, uh, the time you set. And if you are, you can immediately dismiss it, or you can choose to start sharing with emergency contacts or contact 911. If you don't do anything, uh, it will automatically share your location with emergency contacts. It will not automatically contact 911 to prevent uh, accidental calls. And there's also a new bedtime mode in the clock app that lets you fall asleep to calming sounds. Uh, it limits your interruptions and will log your activity for you uh, if you're on your phone after bedtime, it'll tell you like, hey, you told us bedtime was 11 o'clock. <laughs> right. you, you were working you're on up. Twitter and Instagram and TikTok <laughs> this long after 11 o'clock. Google rolled out bedtime tools in Android itself last month, but today's new bedtime tab in the clock app is exclusive to Pixel phones now and coming to all Android devices later this summer. I got to say the personal safety check makes perfect sense, although... And you mentioned the clubs, ha ha. I mean, when was the last time I was at a club? Been a while and probably will be again, <laughs> if ever. But I can imagine a lot of people being like, this is a really good idea. And then they just sort of like safely fall asleep. And then their emergency contacts are like, you might not be okay because you didn't say okay on your side of the device. So some of the stuff is, I guess it remains to be seen how helpful it is versus sort of false positives of people getting scared. But um. But it's 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 better to have the option than to not have it at all. Yeah, and I I, I when, the more I think about that feature, the more I'd like to see it for you know kids and parents, right? Mm -hmm. You get the safety check, kids out, you know, party or whatever, you know, teenagers. Yeah. And they don't check in, and you know, the phone starts doing its thing. I kind of like that feature actually. Yeah, I, I I I can't imagine I would use this at home much, uh, but that's a that's a really good use for it. I could see maybe using this traveling. You know, uh, my wife and I travel, and sometimes one of us will go off to do something while the other goes in a different area. Maybe this is a way for us to make sure that we don't get lost or anything like that. Uh, to the bedtime thing, I'm not going to use though. I yeah. I fall asleep too early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't need it. Uh, Facebook launched a tool, which you might need, called Manage Activity that lets users batch delete old posts. You can search by date, people tagged, or content type, and then choose to either delete entirely or archive the batch so only you can see them. Deleted posts will be recoverable for 30 days if you happen to change your mind, and you can choose to delete them before the 30 days as well if you're just like, no, I'm sure I want them out of here. Manage Activity is available to some app users now and will roll out over the next few weeks to others yeah so i more like this uh for kid for kids right because kids are going to post things that are silly all the times and you know once they start entering college in the job market and you know be able to go back and clean that stuff up adults i think you should be wear your shame <laughs> <laughs> you think this should be locked down locked adult, down yeah adults not allowed this I, if you're i'm sorry if you're over 18 you cannot use manage activity i mean in general i am a person who doesn't like to delete photographs at all i just like like if you're embarrassed by them or they're not working for some reason it's like yeah lock them down but in general like deleting history makes me uncomfortable Facebook is a great place for this. Like I can think of two use cases uh, immediately that people would be like, this is awesome. If you're trying to get a job and all of a sudden there are maybe a collection of photos that you have that, uh, you know, ne not necessarily should go away forever, but need to be put under a padlock so that they're not immediately viewed or go through a breakup mm. uh, of some kind. You know, you've, it, it, we've all sort of seen that where it's like, oh, that person just disappeared from a other person's timeline. Like, okay, you do what you gotta do. But this at least gives you a little bit more um, of flexibility to maybe, again, just put that in a f an album somewhere that isn't associated with you to the outside world, but doesn't necessarily just mean that you've deleted them or you've untagged that person entirely. 
I hadn't even thought about that aspect of it because Facebook does the automatic like this is where you were ten years ago sort oh, of it's thing. The worst. Some people it's the love, worst. but yeah. not only breakups, but you know, friends or family pass away. That uh, too. You might yeah. like being reminded, you might not. And because this has right. a filter, you could say, like, you know what, just archive those pictures for a while. Maybe I'll bring them back later yeah but yeah yeah. Gives you some yeah and years ago i did this on Flickr. i had i mean so i was such a like a deep Flickr user i still am to some extent but back in the day it was more so and after some time went by i was like a lot of this stuff is just public when it shouldn't be and you know even just kind of like photos that i took of a mountain like 40 times where i'm like just the, just the one picture maybe is fine <laughs> right. for like everybody else uh, really and so love that mountain back then yeah and i don't know how many people use facebook in that way where it's like super heavy into photography but if you do then this is actually really helpful yeah my only question is it's gone for you if you want it to be but is it gone for facebook as well that was yeah. my only question is like you know can they dredge it back up later on this uh, is even this though you probably not delete it. Yeah, well, this for, is really yeah, for ad question. targeting purposes, certainly. Yeah. Well, and Facebook has has had a history of of saying things are deleted and then people finding them available if you knew the URL to look for. They fixed that problem. Uh, I would say this is not a good feature for forensic use. If you're like, I I really need to securely get rid of my past. Uh, right. Manage yeah. activity is <laughs> right. is possibly not going to do that. This is this is really like. For the use cases we're talking about where I don't want to be reminded or I just want to keep some things out of my timeline because you're right, Chris, they, they may not be gone from the server. Yeah. AT&T confirmed to The Verge that its HBO Max streaming service will not count against AT&T Mobile's traditional data caps or even those soft data caps you get on otherwise unlimited where they're like, well, it's unlimited, but as soon as you hit this cap, we'll slow you down. Won't count against those either. Competing services like Netflix and Disney Plus do because they haven't paid AT&T. A Verge source says HBO Max is using AT&T's sponsored data system, which technically lets a company pay to excuse its services from data caps, which would mean internally at AT&T, Warner Media records an expense from its bottom line. It has to pay the other division, AT&T Mobile. AT&T Mobile records revenue, uh, but <laughs> as far as at and overall bottom line, bit it's of a, a wash, wash right? Yeah. Uh, and and I, I think sometimes it's easy to dismiss that. I've been in the case where I was working in a department that had to charge, uh, had to had to charge pay back. another division, and it sucks to be in the department that has to pay because that does come out of your budget. But again, overall, it's not going to hurt the profitability of at and is it? Here's the thing: when the Verge investigated back in February 2018, only at and own Directv, UVerse, and Fullscreen used its sponsored data service. AT&T itself on its site only lists a partner named Aquato as a user of its sponsored data page. Aquato is a marketing company that gives customers more data to use in exchange for viewing ads. You, you engage with the marketing and then they give you data credits. Uh, it, the, the idea with this kind of zero rating is that it's either just given like T-Mobile does to partners for no charge, or it's a charge service like AT&T has. Uh, and, and the idea would be like, anybody's free to buy it. So we're not, we're not preferring our own service here. It's just no one else has bought it. Uh, does that ring true with you, Chris? Uh, you know, it, the more I hear it and the more I reread it, the sicker and sicker I get over this. Because the reality is, you know, this is just nonsense. Because clearly if Netflix paid for this, they're going to pass the charge on to us, which is the whole purpose of having a net neutrality in the first place. So, you know, they can say, yeah, we've got this loophole where you can buy the service, but it, it, the reality is they don't expect anybody to buy it. And it, and the, the biggest problem, as the article points out, it's not even illegal because we don't have net neutrality anymore. Thanks, Ajit Pai. Uh -huh, you said his name. I was, I, I was hoping... You wouldn't have to do that to yourself, uh, but you know. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, that's it's a funny thing because uh, for years we've been talking about like, are there, aren't they? Uh, you know, when it when it um, comes to lots of you know large companies that are that are running a lot of people's internet and broadband services and television services and you know sometimes all all three, and. Uh, back, you know, just a few short years ago, it'd be like, well, this is an outrage. And now it's kind of like, huh, so this is happening pretty sucky of AT&T, but like they're allowed to. 
It's not illegal. Yeah. So and, what are we going to do about it? To be clear, they would have been allowed to under the open internet guidelines. Open internet guidelines allowed zero rating for mobile uh, as long as you made it available to others. So by the letter of the law, they, it, it, new, net neutrality was still around. Yeah. Uh, they would have been fine the way it was written. Uh, I, I think the biggest thing that I would like to see AT&T do here is make it transparent how much this, this costs. Now, I know that that's a competitive disadvantage and there's reasons oh, why you wouldn't want to do that. Program. Yeah. But, but yeah. tell me who's using it. Uh, tell me how much it costs. Because if, if it costs a lot, to the point where no one would possibly use this unless they were inside the company knowing like, well, they'll increase my budget by that much later to make up for it. So it's all cool, right? Because there's mm -hmm. tricks you can do like that. Uh, it Because it, that would be getting around the idea of even the old rule, which was if you're not preferring your own services, it's okay. Uh, and it does appear like AT&T is preferring its own services, but AT&T gets to say they're not because they have a plan that anybody can call them and ask them about if they want. You see, the problem with this too, is like super confusing, right? Because, you know, it's like, it's legal, it's not illegal. Well, there's a loophole that allows people to get through it. And I think the whole net neutrality thing um, has gone through because it's somewhat confusing for the majority of people. Like the people that understood it, complained about it, but others, you know, just don't care. They don't realize how it affects them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and when we take on issues like this, we got to be better about simplifying it so that people understand why they're getting screwed. And my big thing is we we, we need to stop changing the rules every time we, we change the party in control. Uh, oh, we God. need to have consistent rules across yeah. administrations. Yeah. yeah. Mm, that'd be nice. Uh, Roku has added a program guide grid. This might be good news for some of you Roku folks to its Roku channel app, which shows what's streaming at the moment uh, with 130 viewing options. The options include several uh, live news streams, similar to how Zumo or maybe Pluto TV work, if you're familiar with either of those. The Roku channel also offers on-demand programming, some free with ads, as well as some premium offerings with Stars, BET+, Acorn TV, and others. Yeah, so it's it's kind of weird if you haven't used the Roku channel. It's it's a bunch of on-demand stuff that's free. It streams with ads. It's very similar to IMDb TV uh, yeah. or uh, Fubo. Was it Fubo? No, Tubi. Tubi. Uh, there's they're so mm -hmm. similar in their names. Uh, but they they just stream stuff for free and they they play ads for you. But then they also do what Apple TV does or Amazon does, where they let you add on paid channels, and that's the Stars, BET Plus, Acorn TV stuff. So. Uh, I like this idea that they've put in a grid, and it's kind of cool that they're they're integrating more of a Pluto TV type feel to this, along with that on-demand library. Uh, especially right now, when people want to watch news, uh, if you're kind of flailing around, if you don't have a YouTube TV or a Hulu Live TV or something like that, this might be a way to find an ABC News live stream, something like that. Yeah, I love anything that helps people cut the cord because I did it years ago and the fact that I still see updates and I still see people saying I just cut the cord you know on Facebook or whatever it really just shows me like yeah we we, we might have been early so anything any service that can be done that can make uh, the process easier for folks and make content easier for people to find because that's one of the hardest things you have to do right is you have to figure out here's what I watch how do I get it when I cut the cord so anything that makes that process easier for people I'm all for this is good for Roku's business too, because uh, their business is less about selling boxes and more about selling services and advertisements. And the more people they can get to use the Roku channel, the more of that they can get. They can rake in a little bit of that star's money. They can rake in a little bit of that advertising money. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they can finally come to an agreement with HBO Max and get an HBO Max app on there. We'll see. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's in interesting to, to see the development of Roku and the evolution of Roku as it goes. Samsung launched the Access Phone subscription program in the United States. The program bundles in a new Galaxy S20 or an S20 Plus or an S20 Ultra with Samsung Premium Care, one terabyte of OneDrive cloud storage, and Microsoft 365 personal services. Users can upgrade devices after nine months for free or earlier for a one-time $100 fee for canceling access within the first three months. So in other words, you can upgrade every nine months. Uh, you got to keep it for at least three months or you got to pay these fees. Access pricing varies by device. $37 per month for the Galaxy S20, $42 a month for the S20 Plus, $48 a month for the S20 Ultra. 
I'm looking at this, and it's easy to kind of just dismiss it, but just OneDrive is nine dollars a month. Office 365 Personal is like I think sixty five bucks a a year or something like that. Um, it, just those two alone really make make this kind of compelling. And then if you're you know I, I don't do it as much anymore, but if you're still on the I gotta have the new hotness every you know every year, I, I think it's a no brainer. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this it's it's sort of like I was at first I was like, oh, it's like Creative Cloud and what I've gotten used to. Like I pay in perpetuity, you know, for all the all the cool all the cool software that I want or my car lease where it's like, all right, well, I get to upgrade fairly often because I can't commit. But also I you know don't have to pay as much upfront type thing. This is this is a great service. Again, like like you mentioned, Chris, for if you want some of that, like the cloud storage, the software um portion of this then the oh, and I get a new device um that's shiny and cool more often because that's part of what I'm paying for is it is very compelling yeah I yeah mean, office I mean word excel access uh man just just those three is good enough I mean shoot the terabyte of of storage uh alone uh, you mm-hmm. know along with the phone don't forget you're getting the phone right like yeah. uh you're, you're getting a top-end phone it's only for the s20s right now uh, but, but yeah, this is, this is a pretty compelling thing if you live in these ecosystems and that's really what the game is right now is right. something like this says, let's get you into the galaxy ecosystem. Let's get you into the OneDrive ecosystem and then you'll want to stay there. You won't want to leave for iPhone or pixel or Dropbox, uh, or any of that. And, and that's, that's the game. All these companies are playing. Yeah. And more importantly, it's the business model that everybody's trying to get into, right? The software as a service, you know? Yep. And, uh, you know, Microsoft does it with uh, Xbox and, you know, you can do the games um, where you get you can download certain certain games that they have available. Um, everybody's trying to find their their niche around this. And, you know, it's kind of smart for them to work together to bundle additional services that they may not be able to offer um, on their own. So that part is smart as well. And, and you know, Microsoft wants to get those numbers up. Uh, for people using Office 365. So it's smart for them to bundle or allow people to bundle their services in. Uh, so, it's just, you know, it's just smart all the way around. Samsung is a service. Ha, ah, taken. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of Samsung, Samsung's 43-inch 4K QLED Cero TV. If you forget which one that is, we talked about it at CES. It's the one that rotates between landscape and portrait modes. Maybe you want to watch some TikTok videos for a while. <laughs> well, you can do that. Then go back to landscape mode. It's now on sale in the U.S. for $2,000 and in the U.K. for £1,600. The Sero was available in Korea up until now, but it's been available there. If you have a compatible phone, like Samsung's own Galaxy phone, you can tap it against the TV's frame to launch screen mirroring, and the TV will automatically rotate because it understands that you want to match your phone's orientation. So that's kind of fun. But if you don't have that or you just want to do it other ways, you can also use a remote or voice commands or the Smart Things app to manually rotate the TV. AirPlay 2 also supported. So if you like the form factor of this, you might be you might be into it. I, I actually have a friend who, for whatever reason, he's like, don't want to uh, mount a TV on my wall. Never liked that idea. Love the idea of being able to put wheels on this, but you can. Didn't Doesn't mind that in landscape mode, you've kind of got this kind of chalkboard type of thing mm-hmm. that is going on that you're going to see when you're not in portrait. And, uh, you know, the only thing that would hold anybody back, really, if you like this, again, because it does give you some options is it's somewhat of an unproven model, but you know, it's the price it's, you know, do you want to spend $2,000 on a 43 inch TV? Because for a lot of people, it's like oh, 43 inches, isn't that big. Yeah. That's a super detractor for me. Is that two grand? I mean, I wouldn't even get this anyway, because, and I, and I want to be clear, I actually enjoy the ability to cast my phone screen uh, up to the TV. Cause quite often when I'm working out in my home gym, and like somebody sends me a video and I've got my brother or my training partner with me in there. I'm like, oh, you got to see this. And I'll send it up to the TV through Apple TV. Yeah, um, super and handy. And we'll get a laugh out of it and then we'll go back to working out or whatever. So I love that feature. So I'm not poo-pooing the, the ability to do that. But I've never had a video where I was like, man, I wish I could cast this and then rotate it. And then, oh, the TV can rotate it for two grand. No, I'm not down with that at all. That is 
crazy. Although Everybody. you mentioned working out, and it's like, listen, I'm a little late to the TikTok game, but I, I, I now, I, you know, I'm waving the white flag. TikTok is super addictive. It just took me a while to like understand that. If I was working out specifically, or some other reason where I'm like, you know, I can just sort of like have stuff on there for an hour. That would be a great time to have portrait mode on my television, which I mean, none of my TVs do that unless you want the black bars. Yeah, I, it's I, kind I, of a, a good side effect, right? Not a thing you would seek out and be like, this is my reason <laughs> yeah. for getting a TV. Right? I hope not. <laughs> Strike me down if I ever like, I need to watch TikTok videos. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, need, I need to get that portrait TV. Like, uh, but yeah, no, I don't know. It's, it's, I'll be interested to see who gets this and 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 how it works and if we see a lot more of these kinds of TVs that you know are swivelable. The Everybody, only, oh, go ahead. Sorry, just real quick. The only thing I feel like they're trying to drop the ball on is if you have to tap the screen to get it to rotate. If that was well, no, you can do it with voice and remote. Too. Oh, yeah. It's not okay. just with the tap. That's yeah. just like a cool okay. feature where if you've got okay. the right yeah. phone, then they talk to each other. I thought you had to tap. I was like, oh, yeah, man, that would. Why that did would you not just go to extra mile? But okay, <laughs> if you can just do it on its own. I'm worried about the hinge wearing out. That's like when when does that, that thing too. stop <laughs> rotating? Well, could yeah. you imagine six yeah. months later? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's stuck in the diagonal. <laughs> well, that's why I'm like, I was saying to my friend, I'm like, buy it and then tell me how it goes because I'm not doing it. You know, but to, to I, uh, guinea pig point. I notice everybody in our chat room is like, this is perfect for Quibi because Quibi has that thing on your phone where you can turn it either way. Except Quibi just got the ability to cast to airplay, but only in landscape. So if you had this TV and you were casting Quibi, you'd have to keep so it. That would be so annoying. Landscape. Yeah. yeah. You'd, mm. you'd be better off on the mobile device as it was intended. Hey, folks, get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes. Uh, don't forget, you can catch up real quick. Subscribe to DailyTechHeadlines.com. And thanks to everyone who participates in our subreddit. I got some stories for Daily Tech Headlines just this morning from y'all, so thank you. Submit stories and vote on them at DailyTechNewsShow.reddit.com and let us know what is important to you. Indeed. Uh, let's check out the mailbag. You know, we got a lot of feedback on our special uh, Time to Listen episode of DTNS yesterday. If you haven't listened to it, I I hope you do, and I hope you get something out of it. And we got so much good feedback. We don't have time for it here, but just wanted to read some excerpts of a few. Uh, one person said, the stories told by those I've listened to for years touched me and gave insight. I have never had so clearly. I'm gonna... Will you pick this up, please, Tom? Oh, sure. Um, yeah. Uh, the story has listened for years, touched me, it gave insight I've never had so clearly. Another person said, I know about the inequality either due to race or economics or both, but knowing isn't feeling or understanding. I'll probably never be able to understand, but your podcast did something that most other reporting has failed to do. For me, it went beyond the facts and hit me on a more personal level. Thank you and your correspondence for this gift. Another person said, I normally write off shows and segments like what you did on Monday as pure virtue signaling. In the case of DTNS, however, your years of apolitical reporting, which I am immensely thankful for, have given you a level of credibility that other outlets simply don't have. As a result, I was happy to listen, really listen, and I now have a better appreciation and perspective. I imagine the decision for this episode wasn't easy, and I imagine you published this episode knowing that you'd get some blowback, probably even people exclaiming that they'd be canceling their Patreon subscriptions. I applaud your courage. Thank you uh, for yielding the DTNS platform to share the voices of the black community in this moment. Uh, those are from different people, all Amazing. those sentiments, but uh, they're representative of the vast majority uh, of people. And uh, yeah, our, uh, our Patreon right now is down six patrons on the month, which is about normal. Uh, as people get charged at the beginning of the month, they tend to go like, oh, wait, I can't really afford that. So uh, it seems like that is not a factor either. And, and let me just take one second to really, from the bottom of my heart, and on behalf, at least from Rob, and I'm sure Brother Tech, thank the folks that took time to listen and and comment and share their thoughts, because the reality is when you have a conversation like this you really do think twice about putting these type of stories out because you're bearing your soul um and you, you're putting your perspective out there that you're not sure that people are going to get and you the account the idea is not to preach or to beat you down or to shame anybody we just want people to understand the world is different and we took 
you know, the time because it was a real conversation. It was a real portrait into our lives. And, the, you know, and you always worry about the response and seeing the response all day today and most of yesterday has absolutely blown me away. And I, I just have to say thank you. And I appreciate the folks that took the time to listen and um, and offer comments on it. Thanks, man. We also got <laughs> on our very happy note uh, a note from Charles who says, I'm sure that EMS will already have let you know, but the GDI team has broken into the top 500 folding at home teams out of 253,708. Yeah, top, so, so folding top, at home is trying 500. to find uh, a protein that'll help find a vaccine for COVID-19. Our team ranking is right now 477. Woo! Awesome. Sh shout out to patrons at our master and grandmaster levels, including Bjorn Andre, Tim Ashman, and Philip Shane. Also, big, big thanks to Chris Ashley for being with us today. Um, you know, just wouldn't have it any other way. Chris, I know it's been been a crazy few weeks. Let folks know where they can keep up with everything that you've been up to. Hey, you can always catch me on Twitter at Big Chris Ashley, but you know, check us out on the SMR podcast. You know, we have these conversations, we have crazy conversations about barbecue, working out, but definitely we're going to cover some tech and from our perspective and and how we kind of think of things. So me, Rob, and uh, Rod are doing it every week at smrpodcast.com. And of course, you can always support our show at any level uh, and get some perks in the bargain. DailyTechNewsShow.com slash Patreon. If you've got feedback for us, our email address is feedback at DailyTechNewsShow.com. Keep it coming. We love to hear from you. We're also live Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern. That's 2030 UTC. And you can find out more at DailyTechNewsShow.com slash live. Back tomorrow with Scott Johnson. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>